You may not be wearing an insulated wetsuit like Pacific swimmer Ben LeCompte, but part of the outfit you're wearing right now is going to come in contact with the ocean eventually. The new invisible threat that they're discovering is that the microfiber from all our clothes ends up in the ocean and now they're finding it already that it's been ingesting by animals. Does it pass through or does it end up in their flesh and then we end up eating it? These are the questions Dimitri Dehane and his team at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography are exploring as they work with a swim expedition to investigate the strange little strings known as microfibers. Unfortunately, the fish would probably have microfibers in its gut. So do I and so do you. It is estimated that every single person would have about three to five millions of microfibers going through their body at a given day. Shed by synthetic materials like polyester, spandex, and nylon, microfibers are so abundant that the filters once designed to catch them clogged so dramatically that companies removed them from washing machines altogether. Today, these particles flush freely into waterways with every spin cycle. Microfibers are about five micron in size or smaller, about 20 times smaller than the diameter of your hair. Microfibers are so small that they are able to absorb contaminants. Uh, those contaminants might be many times more concentrated than in the surrounding water. Microfibers are tinier and carry more charge than microplastics, meaning they may be circulated more quickly throughout global water and air currents and soak up more toxins or microorganisms along the way. They are so small that they are like little needles that can poke a cell. The microfibers have been found in places as remote as the North Pole. There are now increasing reports of microfibers from Europe, from the United States, of course, from South America, and of course from Asia. They are found in bottled water. They are found in water fountains. And anything that links to water, beer, wine, any kind of liquid, might contain some microfiber to some extent. Those microfibers can go inside the cells of the digestive tract. And from there, can they pass on into other tissues? Can it affect asthma, irritation from the you know, respiratory passages, or anything else? With the help of the Seeker crew, Dimitri and his team are collecting samples of ocean water and fish flesh to see if they can unravel the mystery of microfibers' impact. In terms of knowing you know, what we breed, what we eat, and what we drink, it is important that we have a heat map of where microfibers are mainly concentrated. We expect that every single big city would kind of have a, uh, an area around it that would be rich in microfibers associated with where sewage is discharged, but we don't really know what's truly offshore, you know, far away from that. We do this every day. We take three bottles. This water, I will filter it. Then we send the samples. Scientists can analyze how many microfibers are in two liters of water. We don't just try and catch fish to eat. We're also collecting samples from their flesh, which we send back to be dissolved and to see if there's a microfiber in there. To count the fibers in the samples from the boat, the team uses a black light because microfibers are fluorescent. Many things in the ocean could fluoresce. And so we have a, uh, some sort of a, of a program that can teach the computer to recognize what microfibers are based on their shape, based on their length, and based on the combination of spectral characteristics. The technology analyzes the images using face recognition software. So once microfibers can be mapped, Dimitri's team tests how these synthetic particulates could actually impact our health by using light production from species as a potential clue. Organisms in the ocean that produce light, when they don't feel good, they produce less light. That's a brutal star. Tiny, tiny one. Evolutionary speaking, these animals are very close to you and I. And its light production is directly correlated to the health of the nervous system. So if the light does not follow a certain pattern, we can assess neurotoxicity. It's good to use them as a proxy to what we could have as an impact for our own nervous system. 
the main goal and something that is driven everybody is uh, the impact that we can have on first getting the attention on the problem, but also to inspire them to start taking some action. My vision for the future is positive. We will start to learn from nature, and that's the concept of biomimicry. What can we learn from nature to be the best integrated in nature? Companies are already focusing on biomimicry aspects of microfibers and clothing, so that whatever we will generate will be fully reintegrated into the environment. We live in nature, we are part of nature, we are part of a, of a closed system. We have water flowing through us and food flowing through us. And whatever pollution we put out there, that will be flowing through us as well, eventually. Be sure to visit seeker.com slash the swim to read daily updates from Ben Lecomte, track his progress in real time, and watch more videos about the science happening on board Seeker. Click here for this next episode, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.